So many people ask me when we have an event like this, why do we have a Society of World Changers at Indiana Wesleyan? At its core, the mission of Indiana Wesleyan is to change the world for Jesus Christ by challenging and equipping our students to pour salt and shine light everywhere their lives take them. The concept of being a world changer and developing world changers permeates everything we do at Indiana Wesleyan University. Whether you are a student, faculty member, employee, alumnus, or even a guest at Indiana Wesleyan, we strive to bring out the world changer in you. To provide a focal point for this effort, the Society of World Changers was created in 2003. If you were born after 2003, raise your hand. Yeah, so that gives us a little context. We want to recognize role models who have exemplified the concept of world changers and whose lives can inspire future generations. Each year, a World Changers Convocation is held on our campus in Marion to induct a new member in the society and celebrate their accomplishments. A life-size bronze bust of each inductee is placed on permanent display in the Society of World Changers Hall of Honor in the Jackson Library Rotunda. The idea for the Society of World Changers sprang from a campus-wide conversation over 20 years ago from the book Roaring Lambs, written by the Society's first inductee, the late Bob Briner. The book challenged believers to live out their faith boldly in the hustle and bustle of everyday life and to engage head-on in a culture often indifferent, if not antagonistic, to the Christian worldview. So let me tell you a little bit about today's inductee. On behalf of Indiana Wesleyan, I am privileged to introduce Mr. Ranji Thomas as the 21st individual inducted into the Society of World Changers. The men and women identified as world changers have left an indelible mark on our society and Christian heritage. Just a few months before his 30th birthday, Ranji Thomas was featured in Entrepreneurs Magazine annual Young Millionaires edition. From that moment forward, Ranji was propelled into a lifetime of being sought out as an advisor, investor, and encourager, serving kingdom-minded, world-changing leaders like Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott, co-founders of eHarmony, who are with us here today, Scott Beck, the former chairman of Blockbuster Video and CEO of Glue. In his early 20s, Ranji joined, us, joined as one of the eight people in the startup that became Nextel, Communications, a nation wireless communication company that we know now as T-Mobile. It was at Nextel that Ranji learned how to grow one idea from something small into a national and global scale by finding like-minded people in different cities that band together to make something more valuable than any of its parts. And because of his passion for storytelling, Ranji later became the CEO of Flying Rhino. This animation company made the Christian kids videos that maybe many of you have watched growing up. With those experiences under his belt, Ranji started searching the world and investing in young, innovative leaders drawn to building thriving businesses using their resources to impact God's kingdom significantly. People like Pancho Lauder, who pioneered the church website, mobile app, and electric tithing company that he sold to Tim Turner that became Subsplash, the world's largest digital platform for churches. People like Fadi Hanna, founder of Flagship Agency, who came to America from Australia and built a thriving brand agency in Los Angeles in under two years, working with high-profile candidates, many of whom who have shaped Christian culture over the last decade. And then there's Dylan Thomas, who's also on our platform today, and who is helping us uh, rethink and relaunch our worship arts program. From the worship band Hillsong United, who co-founded co uh, who co-founded Creator with Brooke and Scotty Lingerwood. Creator is a digital platform that enables the world's top worship songwriters and church worship leaders to help churches build a thriving worship culture in cities around the world. Most recently, Ranji became the mentor to the music artists Jake and Zach Lawson, known to you as Jake, two passionate Christian brothers who have disrupted the entire music industry as one of the first artists to create songs like Golden Hour, now streaming over a billion times without the use of a music label, dropping songs directly to listeners on social media and DSPs like Spotify. And yes, I looked up what a DSP was, uh, um, just for your FYI. Um, 
Through the digital consultancy Servant IO that Ranji co-founded with his close friend Ben Elmore, he has learned to scale the number of visionary leaders that he can serve. People like Mark Green, as he and Dallas Jenkins endeavor to reach a billion people with The Chosen, giving the world a beautiful depiction of authentic Jesus committed to distributing it in 600 languages. Though the types of companies Ranji is involved in appear unusually eclectic at first glance and span technology, faith, music, animation, and even AI robotics, the one thing they have in common is Ranji helping a highly talented founding visionary who is called to pioneer and start something for God, doing something new for the kingdom. Ranji is a teaching pastor and elder at Manor House Church in Portland, Oregon, where he lives with his wife, Shine, their two kids, Sydney and Pax. I'd like to ask Ranji to come and join me at this time and stand right here uh, to the left. We're going to hood you now. Okay, so just stand out a little bit from the platform. At this time, it's my pleasure to uh, first bestow uh, an honorary doctorate on Ranji. So today, Ranji, it's our pleasure for choosing a life focused on building God's kingdom, for being a Christian leader focused on investing, innovating, and leading kingdom building entrepreneurial opportunities and businesses, for leading with heart and leveraging your resources, time, and efforts on mentoring young Christian leaders, for your vision and leadership and nonstop support of the Christian community in Portland and around the globe, for your powerful witness for Jesus Christ in every aspect of your life, and for your exemplary life, which has modeled what it means to be a faithful follower of Christ on this earth. And now by the authority vested in me by the Indiana Wesleyan University Board of Trustees and the state of Indiana, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Management, in token of which I cause you to be vested with the appropriate academic hood and present you with this parchment of documentation. I'd like to uh, also invite Ranji's family up um, onto the platform right now. So anybody of you who claim Ranji, come on up. <laughs> we have um, his wife, Shine. We have his mother, Layla. We have um, Pax, Givi, the brother, and we also have my wife, Lena. As we unveil the bust, uh, this bust will be added to the impressive lineup of previous inductees uh, in the Jackson Library Rotunda. Dr. Carl Shepard, our chairman of our board, will unveil the bust. You gotta be careful when you bring a brother up, so. Uh, that's great, well, we'll invite the family to take their seats. You're on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. I can't even start today uh, without at least honoring and acknowledging, you know, a few key people and, uh, I can't tell you what this means for me. I know I'm just a stranger to you. I don't know why you'd even care, but I do want to thank you that you would just let me share with you a little bit about what I think God has for you from what he shared with me. At least that's the, that's the hope today. So I first want to thank Dr. Kalaga, who is a visionary leader. He's joined about 18 months ago to lead this institution. And I just uh, have been in awe of just watching how quickly and how, how uh, specifically you've built these relationships across the country. And I'm for sure committed to you to help you continue in doing that work. So, he, yes, <laughs> thank you, yeah. <laughs> I 
And I just have to thank God for Dr. Jerry Pattengale, you know. I don't know how many of you know him. <clears throat> but uh, I know you would know of his work inside the house of Indiana Wesleyan University. I don't know how many of you get to see what he does outside the house as a representative of this incredible institution. Um, I, I'm humbled today because most of the accomplishments that I'll share with you today, uh, very few are mine actually. They're, they're just people that I love and had a chance to walk alongside of. And somehow, what's crazy is you get pick up some credit along the way that, that uh, other people do. But Dr. Jerry Pattengill is the absolute, uh, let's just say I'm just a padwan to what Dr. Jerry Pattengill has done across the country. And, and, and it has meant so much to me that he's included me as a friend and... and uh, is even largely responsible for how I get to be in this community. Of course, we need to thank the board of trustees and our esteemed faculty and staff. You know, we hear so many great testimonies. I have the privilege of actually working with students here, so we have some different programs that we interact with students, and it's, uh, <coughs> I could call out some of the names of the favorites, but that probably wouldn't be fair, but, but uh, we, hear, we hear about uh, your impact. And just as a quick word of encouragement to you, I know that students, you know, come and do their thing and, and, and maybe you never get to hear those moments of what they speak of when they share something that they reference that you said. And we, luckily, because of some of the projects that we work on on behalf of Dr. Kalaga here, we get to hear those stories. So, um, yes, thank you to um, that faculty and staff. And of course, to the Society of World Changers. Um, what an incredible idea. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard that saying, like, you know, those games where they have a whole bunch of faces and, and you ask yourself, like, which one doesn't belong here? I, I have to confess, I do feel a little bit intimidated by the value, I mean, to have people that I've had the privilege of knowing um, over the years and the things they've done. Well, they're heroes to me, so I acknowledge that I'm standing on the shoulder of, of heroes um, in doing that. And I also want to just thank my, uh, if, if I were a game show, my, my lifeline, you know, that person you call to figure out how to get something done would be, uh, would be Todd, you know. So, so the way Todd Dahlberg just kind of treat, treats us like family, uh, you know, he and his wife just do such an incredible job. So these are all people that I'm sure you've heard of because they're leaders in your organization. I hope you will find a way, I'm speaking mostly to the students, to just get behind the wall of the titles and the pomp and circumstance and the place and really see if you can find your way into the life of these people, you know? I know that takes some effort, that takes some energy, but you'll be, uh, you'll be amazed at what God will show you through some people who've kind of given their life to growing in the next generation and to kind of seeking God in the midst of that. And so I just really encourage you to not let yourself feel like, oh, those people are going to be too busy or I, I would never get a chance to really get to know them. I don't believe that's true at this, at this institution. I, I think the culture supports it. So that would be my, my great help. Now, you guys already honored them and I'm grateful for that um, with my family, but <coughs> I guess none of us would be here, at least with me, uh, if not for my mom, Leela Thomas. Um, and I'm so pleased pleased that even though she looks 50 at 84, she traveled across the country to be with us today. And um, she's a woman who built a great life of her own, modeling for her three children, just what it means to, what it means to want to do right, and what it means to love mercy, and to walk humbly um, before our Lord. <coughs> Today we're going to talk about some visionaries. They're, these are people that God, for some crazy reason, allowed me somehow to intersect with their life. And um, I have to admit, the first visionary that I can remember in my childhood growing up that I actually had a relationship with is my brother, um, Gibby Thomas. You may not know that name, but if any of you have ever shopped at a Nordstrom store, um, that's the company that he joined as a young man and then retired as the president and spent his life kind of serving this mission of how can we take the idea of customer service 
and just show respect to a nation. And what would happen? And they grew to be, you know, one of the greatest retailers in our country um, in, in doing that. And it was kind of my first experience of just growing up with a visionary to see like, how do you create something from nothing often? Now, of course, we would give full credit to the Nordstrom family who had that commitment, but my brother ended up being kind of that person who came into that family and then learned to be one of the family as they grew that company across the country. I always forget, because I know that Nordstrom can be regional in some cases, how many of you ever grew up shopping at a Nordstrom or a Nordstrom rack or, yeah. So I just wanted you to know that this all starts as early as my childhood in a God thing. And I don't believe this is an exclusive message. I think this is your message. I think this is your life. As I share these stories of these extraordinary interactions, I just want to keep reminding you, and it's not because I have some false humility or some, they're really, and the people will tell you themselves, they're the ones that God used to do something extraordinary, but for some reason he allowed me to kind of be in that, that, you know, that group of people. My own wife, you know, uh, Shine Thomas, I, I would just want to honor her um, before this group. You know, she's an amazing wife and mother. She's a leader in our church. Um, she is that example in the Bible of a godly wife. And um, I'm just so grateful um, for her. But she herself, again, these are all stories I'm sharing because I just want you to understand the context of what God can do with someone who wants to live their life making an impact. So Shine, as a wife and a mother and a leader in her church, also is the global um, leader of talent for Nike. So she gets to have a team of about 100 people that search the world, hopefully some of you, for the next great designer, for the next great um, software developer, for the people that will take Nike continuing on to grow in this world. And uh, it humbles us often when we see all of these family members, you know, at some point you just got to say, it's a stacked deck. God did something that we don't know how to explain. You know, it might have started with my own grandfather um, who uh, helped bring Billy Graham to India and to uh, pr create a crusade that actually kind of changed the shape of Christianity in India. Not my grandfather, not even Billy Graham, God, right? And it's just this idea of, does someone want to wake up in the morning and say, God, use me? And how incredible that kind of gives you the chance to play out. Like when, I see, when I see things like this, I have to admit, I felt bad for the other uh, world changers because I got to see all those beautiful statues, you know? Somehow they didn't get the technology right on like the skin color, but for me, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it right I mean I mean like I mean technology is getting incredible <laughs> that it can do that secret the other ones kind of look like my skin color and I I like to think of that as a prophetic moment somehow um, but uh, in, in this kind of pursuit um, I wanted to share some stories in my heart of uh, uh, some of the, the real world changers, which is why just by being in the draft of them, I get to stand before you today, you know? It's, a, uh, it's really a privilege. But it started for me at a pretty young age. In fact, I heard there was a few students here, maybe I think there's a pretty actually good sized student population here from high school that I think you're sitting over there somewhere, am I right? Yeah, so welcome. This could be a divine appointment for you today, maybe more than you expected. Because it's just possible that God has an idea for you today that might help kind of the next several years of your life. And so I want to ask you a question, and I, I'm asking this of everyone, right? Um, all the talented people up here and all the folks in the audience. And, and it's just this concept of what's an animating thought... And I want to, I intentionally use the word animating. It's what, what gives you life. You know, what brings energy? What's the animating thought that you're allowing to be the inspiration for your life? 
Do you have one? Have you ever thought about it? I know that it's easy to get through life and just do the, you know, hey, I went to elementary school and then went to middle school and then went to high school and everyone said I had to go to college. So now I'm here at IWU and I could see how just the busyness of life can allow you just to go from one section to another, never really stopping to figure out what is the animating thought that is going to capture my mind that I'll spend a lifetime processing and maybe come out the other end having had a chance to touch incredible things just because of that one thought. So I was 16 years old. I remember it pretty distinctly. Um, Ironically for most people or for a lot of Christians, um, these thoughts would come from scripture. True for me as well, by the way, Um, that there's many different areas of my life where scripture is the key thought that kind of helps define my worldview, what I value, how, uh, you know, what I care about. And I've actually spent a lifetime helping people discover that for themselves. But it's kind of funny that one of the first times an animating thought ever came to me, like I said, it was around age 16, that kind of surprised me was actually not biblical at all. I mean, it, I don't want to say it's anti-biblical, but it didn't come from the Bible, right? And it was just something that I heard. It wasn't like I was in this great moment and the lights didn't dim and a light shine on me as the dove appeared. You know, it wasn't that kind of vibe. But for some reason, the thought really stuck with me. And it was by a speaker that I'd never met, never heard of before that day. Um, Some of our uh, more mature group in the audience will probably recognize the name, but I don't expect you to. Um, But set a pace for a lot of people with the things that he would say. And so I'd like to, pretending that I'm a doctoral student here, spend the rest of our time defending a thesis. And this is just the one that God chose for me. I'm not proposing that this needs to be the one for you, but I do propose that God will share with you the thesis that he'll have you process for the rest of your days. And it's so exciting when you know that the very idea comes from God. You don't have to wonder or worry or dare I say, switch majors three times, right? You can really jump into it with a sense of confidence. And I'm going to, I'm going to share with you today exactly what that, what that is. And so with that said, I want to just share this thesis. (coughs) And that came from Zig Ziglar. It said, you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help other people get what they want. It's not particularly from the Bible. In fact, I could probably find some flaws with it if I wanted to. But for some reason, God used those words to change the entire direction of my life. So I've just spent a lifetime going and waking up and having God moments that just explain to me what um, I'm to do. You know, if we jump all the way to the book of Samuel, for Samuel, chapter 16, we see a scene where Samuel is being sent to go anoint the coming king, King David. For some reason, those two thoughts clicked for me. That I can have anything in this world that I want if I just help some people get what they want. And I chose to conform that to the word of God by seeing it through the life of Samuel. It's our job to search the world for people that God will use to do that. You know, when I think of Les and Leslie Parrott, you know, they literally transformed how this country meets and gets married when with Dr. Neil Warren, they created this company called eHarmony that changed how people started learning how to meet people online. And it was a hard run for them. They faced a lot of failure until one day God just breathed on it and it, and it popped open, right? We, you know, we talked about so many of these folks, so I, um, I won't, uh, I won't go, probably go through the details just for time, but these people have all kind of come, and you heard them, Dr. Kalaga kind of read through some of the folks um, of the things that we've been able to do in music, both in the secular and the faith space. Um, I laugh about uh, a mentor of mine, Scott Beck, probably Les Parrott and Scott Beck have some of the biggest influence on my life. Scott was the uh, 
the chairman and, and co-founder of uh, Blockbuster Video. So what probably you guys don't know is that before there was Netflix and chill for married couples, by the way, <laughs> there was Blockbuster and chill, and it's why some of you are in this room today. So <laughs> let's like kind of just acknowledge honor where honors do, <laughs> right? But these are people who changed the world um, through people. That was a reference for the young people. We'll explain later uh, what that means. I'll have to have a little conversation with you about how babies are made. But after that, we can go, we can go great. So I'm going to end with this idea. Um, it's this idea for you. I, wanna, I can't leave here without telling you. The, the thesis statement, right? H how does one find what the animating idea should be for their life? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with a verse. Uh, if you've ever heard of the band U2, Bono often references this on stage as God's phone number. And uh, if you want to put it in your phone so that you can call God whenever you want. It's Jeremiah 33.3. And it says, call to me and I will answer you. And tell you great and unre un unsearchable things. Things you, you could not know. And I would not be honoring our holiness background here at Indian and Wesleyan. Without honoring the fact that the Holy Spirit is the one that is to give you that animating thought. It's not based on your ambition. Though many people will think it is. It's not based on just your skill set. Because often God sends people into missions they had no skills for. But today, I want to leave you as world changers with this thought that God himself could actually give me the very purpose that as I live my life, I come and encounter the folks that together will bless people all over the world. Amen? Thank you.